Hello and welcome. I'm super excited to be here. As you all know, large language models have taken the world by storm. However, we have still seen very little or limited usage of LLMs in large generative AI applications because of few reasons. Number one, most effective large language models are closed. That means, makes it less customizable and lack of ownership. Second, it is expensive to train and run LLMs, and therefore making it hard to build a viable business model. And third, it is hard to access, deploy, and learn the effective techniques to make these models work for your business. Llama was launched in July of this year with open permissive license, available free to use and research and commercial use. It's, it solves the first two problems, and today I will attempt to solve number three Three, which is the third problem, by showing you how easy it is to access Llama and use it in your application development. My name is Amit Sangani, and I'm director of partner engineering team working on open source projects such as Llama and PyTorch. My team's primary mission is to make it easier for developers to integrate these platforms into their projects and solve real world problems. In this session, we'll go through a lot of content. We'll start with the basic concepts and build on it, going through the actual code and running it. By the end of this session, you will have enough understanding of Llama 2, plus you will be able to take the starter code I show you today and use it in your Llama 2-based Gen AI application. Quick disclaimer, there's a lot of content in this session, and I'll be going fast, so please try to follow along as much as you can. All the code I show you will be open source and available immediately after the session, so you don't have to write down anything. So let's start. All right, let's start with a few prerequisites. We expect the audience to know basic understanding of large language models and basic understanding of Python. If you haven't done Python coding, that's fine. You, you will still be able to follow along with the code. Now let's start with what is Llama. Llama are state-of-the-art models from Meta. These are large language models, and they come in three sizes, 7 billion, 13 billion, and 70 billion parameters. These models come in two flavors, pre-trained and chat models. Pre-trained models were trained using all publicly available data sets. No data from Meta's applications or user of Meta was used in training these models. And chat models are fine-tuned versions of these pre-trained models. And they are optimized for dialogue use cases. Choosing the model requires certain consideration about size, quality, cost, and speed. Larger models are more accurate and intelligent, but they are more expensive and has higher latency, versus smaller models, which are faster and cheaper to run, but maybe less accurate than the large models. So you have to consider these trade-offs while selecting the model for your generative AI applications. We typically recommend you to use the start with a smaller model and then gradually grow into a larger model. Along with these models, we also launch two documents. One is the research paper, which is, gives you a lot of technical details around what the models are, how they were built, and all the benchmarking and performance uh, evaluation numbers, in, um, which you can read it uh, in great detail. The other document is about responsible use guide, which tells you how to make sure your models are safe for your users to use it. Let's talk about accessing these models. Multiple ways you can access these models. One of the most simple ways is to register on Meta's website, download these models, and deploy it in your own infrastructure. Now, this, is, this gives you full control over these models. There is no restrict, restriction on licensing these models. You can use it as many times as you want in your generative AI applications, and you can also fine tune this with your own data set. The other way to uh, use the model is using hosted API platforms like Replicate. In this session, we will 
use Replicate because it, they, they provide a very simple API on top of the models which you can use it. The other way is to use the hosted container platform like Azure, AWS, and GCP. We have partnerships with all these major cloud providers and with few clicks, you'll be able to provision your VM and be able to use the models for your generative AI applications. Let's talk a little bit about the use cases of Llama. There are multiple use cases. These are just few of them. One of them is content generation, which is the most common use case. You can use Llama to generate content for your poems, for your articles, for your emails, whatever you want to do. The second is chatbots. Now, chatbots are becoming really popular. This is a common conversation like AI assistant, digital assistant, you can converse. Users can converse with your chatbot. And in today's session, we will show how to build one. Others are summarization. You can have an article which you want to summarize, or you can have an entire book which you can summarize as well. And programming is a very popular use case as well, where people can use the large language models like Llama to code, to generate code, to analyze code, and to debug code. We launched Code Llama just recently to do exactly this task. So now let's go into understanding how to use Llama. So what you see here is few of the dependencies which you first want to install. And here you see Replicate, Langchain, and a bunch of other dependencies. Now, I will go into more detail, but the reason why we have Replicate is it provides a simple Python client which allows you to make calls to your Replicate server, which has the large language model, uh, which has Llama installed there. We have Langchain, which allows you to build generative AI applications easily. A lot of the nitty gritty details, Langchain kind of uh, builds it inside their libraries, so we don't have to do a lot of that work, and we'll show you today how to use that. And then we have sentence transformers, which are embedding models, which we need to use it if you want to bring in an external data source into our framework. And, and again, I will show you how to do that. All the other dependencies like PDF and, and um, PDF to image and so forth are mainly for bringing a PDF file, which we will use it as, as an external data source to bring in and use it in our generative AI application. And what you see here is Llama 13b, which uh, the URI of Llama 13b, which is on our server, which we will use it. So now let's go to some of the um, most important things, are how to first set up the Replicate server. So first thing you need is a Replicate token. And I have already got the Replicate token, which I will add it here um, in a second. And once I have this, um, I will be able to run all the code here. Now, what you see here is uh, after I enter the Replicate token, I have two functions. One is the completion function and the chat completion function. Now these are nothing but the wrapper APIs on top of the replicate function. The replicate.run allows you to make a call to the replicate server. I pass in the input prompt, which we will see how I pass in to this basic function. The second function is the chat completion function, which is prompt and system prompt. And the system prompt allows me to prepend to the actual prompt and control the behavior of the large language model, Llama, in this particular case. So let's run the first uh, prompt, the typical color of a Llama is. Now, because this is the first time we are running it, my servers are not warmed up, so it may take a little bit of time. Um, but here the whole goal is to see, make a very simple call to the server to see how the sentence completion works, okay? Now this will take a few minutes, but let's go forward. So this particular uh, function, the chat completion function, now has a prompt and a system prompt. And as you can see, the typical color of Llama is part of the prompt, and the system prompt says, respond with only one word. Now we are directing the model to tell us that you should respond with just one word, and that is what uh, uh, you are basically um, telling the model to behave in a certain way. Now we have received our response and you can see that um, it is pretty elaborate. It is a little bit verbose, 
but it gives a pretty good understanding of the typical color of llama is, lovely shade of brown. Um, there's a um, bunch of other things in there, like more reddish in color and so forth, and it looks pretty good. Now the next prompt, uh, we should run that, and let's click on that, and we should see the output pretty quickly now since the server is warmed up. And here you see the output is brown. So it responded in one word. Now, our models can do much more than that. It can return the, format, uh, the particular format you ask it to do. So in this particular example, you see the response uh, we expect is in JSON format, and it does return back in JSON format. So now this is really important because you can think about bring, sending a request to Llama, getting a response back, and that response is in a particular format which you can plug in into your workflow for other tasks. And Llama can do all of that um, in conjunction with your entire workflow system. So let's talk about Gen AI application architecture. Um, here's a pretty simple architecture. You see users interact with applications. Applications can be on mobile or web. And if your applications need to access large language model, then it can access it through an hosted API, and it can connect to your platforms. Now, your platform can be your own custom server where you can host Llama, or it can be on Hugging Face or Replicate or any other server. Once the user request goes to, through the hosted API, it goes to the platform. Platform sends it to Llama as a user input. Llama processes it, synthesizes it, gets the output back, and then from the platform, the output goes back to the end user. The frameworks and LangChain, which you see here, is again super critical as well, because um, LangChain provides you an easy to function a library, which allows you to do a lot of, it, it basically creates, um, it, it hides a lot of the nitty gritty details on how to build generative AI applications, and it provides you a simple interface. So we will use LangChain as we go through the code today. Um, and I personally like it a lot because it makes building applications super easy. So let's look at the chatbot architecture, okay? There are five most important things to build a chatbot. The first one is user prompts. The second is input safety, Llama 2, output safety in memory and context. And let me explain this in more detail. User sends a prompt. The prompt goes to the input safety layer, okay? And the reason why we have this input safety layer is because you want to make sure that no harmful content goes to Llama. Now you can add your additional input safety layer as, on top of it as well. Once that input safety layer, you the content goes to the context. Uh, it's, it's basically called the context going into the Llama model, which then outputs data, and, and again, it goes to an output safety layer. And that output content then is sent back to the user. Now, as you see, you have multiple layers, input safety layers and output safety layers, and both can be added on your side. Llama internally also goes through this safety checks. Now, to build a chatbot, we also need to make sure that we have memory, because you have to store the previous context to make sure that Llama understands what the previous context is, and then infer from that the conversation which you are trying to have it with the chatbot. So, as we basically go through this, we'll look at the code as well. Now, LLMs are basically stateless. They are like HTTP, you send a request, you get a response back, and it doesn't have any context, previous context. So here's an example where we basically send a prompt chat, like what is the average lifespan of Llama? And as we execute that, we'll see that the average lifespan of Llama is around 20 to 30 years. That's what it returns back, okay? So this single request response is called single turn. And you, you saw that um, that's, that's the request and you get the response. Now, let's take another example. We say, what animal family are they? Now, this is important because 
it doesn't know the context of they. And if we execute this, we'll see that it returns an animal family describing it as dragons. So clearly this is not right and our model has hallucinated. And the reason why this is not right is because it was not able to store the previous question, which is lifespan of llama, and it was not able to infer that we are talking about llama. So llama needs to, to have the previous context if you want to have an intelligent conversation. So the next example, we try to store the previous context. So we have this question, user, what is the average lifespan of llama? And then assistant responds back, which is what we put in here. And then we ask, what animal family are they? Because we have stored the previous context and sending it as product of the prompt, we are now getting a better answer, which is llamas are members of camelide family, which includes camels, alpacas, and vicunas. And so by storing previous context in the memory and adding it as part of the prompt, we are now able to tell llama that we are talking about llama as a family and, and get the right response back um, from, our, uh, from our model. So this is what um, basic chat conversation looks like. Now, this is very simplistic, obviously. When you do real chat applications, you will be able to store context. Uh, there'll be a limit to the context size because we have limit of 2,000 tokens as the, as the context size. But you'll be able to store like 10, 15, 20 last conversations and send it as part of your prompt to the Llama model so that you can have this intelligent conversation with the model. Now let's go to the prompt engineering. Now, as you can see from the previous examples, we have curated our prompts before we send it to the server. And there are ways where you can continue to curate it in such a way so that you can give additional examples which will help us get the desired responses from Llama. Here's a couple of examples in context learning, which is zero text and few shot. In zero shot learning, we basically don't provide any examples, and the model is already trained in a certain class of examples, and it will be able to infer, infer a different class. If you see this code, um, you'll see that we are sending in a prompt, we are asking Llama to classify a statement, which is, I saw a gecko, and we are putting in a question mark after a statement uh, or sentiment, and we are expecting an output, which basically tells us what kind of sentiment was it. Now, our expectation is there are basically three types of sentiment, positive, negative, or neutral. And, and when you execute this, you will see that because Llama did not have any examples of that, it will return back as cute. Now, cute is an emotion, and it's not a sentiment. So what we are seeing is that your model, uh, Llama model is not able to infer what the sentiment looks like. So let's execute this in real time, and, and you can see the response back coming as cute. Now, what do we need to do to give us a sentiment which is grouped across positive, negative, and neutral. So the next example which you see here are by giving few additional prompts which tells Llama that, okay, here's an example of positive statement, which is classify I love Llama as positive, I don't like snakes as negative, and I saw a gecko. Now Llama is able to infer accurately that I saw a gecko is actually just a neutral sentiment. Now this is again very simple example, but it's extremely powerful. Think about all the reviews you might have, 5,000 plus reviews or 50,000 reviews. You can actually provide it to Llama and Llama will be able to identify which ones are positive and which ones are negative and which ones are neutral. And so by curating your in input prompts, you are able to get the most desired output from Llama. Let's take another example, which is the zero shot example. Here, you're basically asking a question, Vicuna, 
and expecting Lama to answer that. Now, to a human naked eye, if somebody asks what is Vikuna or Vikuna as a question mark, it's hard to answer that. And Lama is doing the same thing. It's answering back Vikuna. But what if you give some examples and can you spot a pattern here that a question, Lama, it says yes. Alpaka, it says yes. Rabbit, it says no. And Vikuna, we are asking to infer what does that mean. Now, when you execute this, Lama is able to say yes. And what this means is it is able to understand that Vikuna is of the same family as Lama and Alpakas. Now, this is extremely powerful because it is able to infer something which you haven't put in as part of the prompt, but all you have done is give an example and it is able to infer from that examples. So that's pretty simple examples of prompt engineering, but it is really powerful when you have to get the desired responses from Lama. Let's look at chain of thought. Now, what you see here is a word problem, and we are asking Lama to solve a word problem. Now, inherently, large language models, because of the way it works, it is very hard for them so to solve word problems. So we are asking, because it just predicts the next token. So we are asking Lama, we are sending in a word problem, which is asking Lama. Lama started with five tennis balls. It buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each can has three tennis balls. How many tennis balls does Lama have? Now, if you take a few seconds, you know that we are asking for um, Lama started with five balls, two more cans. Each one has three cans, so the answer should be 11. But what does Lama return? It returns eight tennis balls. So clearly, it was not able to solve this step by step logically. And here's where chain of thought prompting comes in. You can ask Lama with a one simple statement. Let's think step by step. If you add that one simple statement, you will be able to then ask Lama to solve this problem logically step by step. So that's where the, the statement is. Let's think step by step. Let's execute this and let's see the results. Now, Lama was able to figure out step by step that starts with five tennis balls, buys, buys two more cans of tennis balls. Each one has three, so two times three is six. Six plus five is 11. Now, again, this is a very simple example, but you can think about very complicated algorithms. You can supply it as an input to, to your prompt to Lama, and Lama will be able to figure this out and generate a, another algorithm which will be very similar to that and solving a pretty complex task. So it makes it super powerful. Now, prompt engineering is great, but it has limitations. There are two major limitations. One is your large language models are trained up to a certain date. And beyond that date, you will not be able to get any inferencing done from large language model if your content is recent or recent news. And, um, and large language model will have no understanding of that. Second is, it lacks specialized knowledge. So if you have certain custom documents or, extra, or data sources which were not publicly available, Lama was not trained on. And so you will not be able to query against those. So there is a process, a technique called Retrieval Augmented Generation, RAG. And here's the architecture, a very simple architecture, which shows you how to do that. Let's say you have an external data source, and you want to query against that to get the relevant information, and then pass it to your LLM to infer more detailed understanding from that relevant information. You can do that. So here you see the basic architecture where user prompts the framework, which we will, in this case, we will use Langchain. And Langchain connects to this external data source. It can be a relational database, it can be a PDF file, or a set of documents. You have to convert these documents into embeddings and store it in a vector store, which I will show you in a in few seconds um, on how to do that. And 
once you get the relevant information from this external data source, you can put it as part of your prompt and then send it to Llama. Okay? And um, this is a very important and excellent way if you have domain specific data which you want to query against, you will be easily be able to do that um, using this model architecture. So let's look at the code. So we first initialize Langchain and we basically run that. Um, now Langchain is, a, like I said, open source library. We import, um, um, we use a replicate server. So our models are hosted there. And then there is a four step process. The first step is to load the external data into our documents. In this particular scenario, we'll be using a PDF file, uh, which is the responsible use guide. And we will query against that responsible use guide. So it's a, it's a simple PDF. You can see the URL right there. The second step is to tokenize and split the document into chunks. The reason why we do that is because when the query comes in, we want to find a relevant chunk from the document and not query the entire document. So by splitting it up into different chunks, um, we'll be able to query one particular area within the document and query that information. The third step is to use an embedding model. Now, Llama or any LLMs don't understand word, uh, text, it understands numbers. So we have to convert text to matrices and vectors, which the LLM can understand. So the step three, we basically convert that into the embeddings. And then the step four, which you see there, is we use the Facebook AI similarity search um, library to get the embeddings and chunks into our, our vector store. Now, we will start with like uh, calling some of the prompts. So I have a prompt right here. How is Meta approaching open science? And this is coming from the PDF file. The output which you see here seems like pretty good. Meta is approaching open science by open sourcing code. And you see a few sentences here. Now, this is not exactly coming from the PDF file, but it is getting the relevant content from the PDF file and then pushing it to your LLM and getting the output back. So then I ask a follow-on question, how is it benefiting the world? Now, you see this is, again, a multi-turn chat, which we saw in previous example. We are storing the chat history here. So it, it knows the previous context, and now it will build on that previous context and give us the response back. So we should see a response which basically talks about what are different ways the, the open science is actually benefiting the world. And, and here you see it, democratization of access, um, increased innovation, and a bunch of other things. So this is a very simple way you can query your set of documents and then use it in conjunction with your Llama models to get the output back. So that basically concludes how you would build a chatbot and how you would use Langchain and prompt engineering. Let's go to the next step about how do you fine tune your models. Now, there are certain limitations with prompt engineering. What if you have domain specific data, which is massive, right? You're not able to put it as part of your pr prompts. Um, you cannot index it in a vector store because it, you have a lot of domain specific data sets. Now, you can use another technique called fine tuning where you can actually change the weights of the model itself directly. And here are, is a simple architecture where you take a custom data set, send it to pre-trained Llama model, and you will get a fine-tuned Llama model. Okay. And, and the, the steps here, uh, there are many, many different types of fine-tuning you can do. One is the parameter efficient fine-tuning. Second is LoRa. And third is QLoRa, which is a quantized model of LoRa. The whole goal here is to get a newly fine-tuned model, which is serving, which is has the intelligence against your own data set. 
Now, we are also using something called RLHF, which is the reinforcement learning through human feedback. Once you have the fine-tuned model from your data set, you want to continue to fine-tune it with some human annotations so that you can reduce the losses, it's more accurate. You also want to make sure that these fine-tuning models have certain benchmarks and quality. So you want to run these evals and quality benchmarks against those fine-tuned models to make sure the accuracy is high. And you can all do all of this by using PyTorch. PyTorch is our open source framework, AI framework, which allows you to do pre-training and fine-tuning. It has a bunch of libraries which you can use to do the fine-tuning. Let's go to the next section about responsible AI. With power comes responsibility. Our, these large language models are extremely powerful. And you want to make sure that when you use it in your applications, the output generated from them is safe for your users. You want to make sure that you minimize the hallucination. There is a chance that you will not completely eliminate the hallucination. But you want to minimize as much as possible. And you want to take care of the input and the safety, output safety layers. Llama itself is pretty safe. But if, you have, if your application demands additional safety, then you should be able to put that in there as well. Red teaming is super important as well. Red teaming is simulating real world cyber attacks. So when Llama was launched, we actually did that exercise where we had more than 300 people, both internal employees as well as external vendors, work with Llama to make sure it's extremely safe. We had cybersecurity experts, um, misinformation experts, people from legal policy and so forth, who actually pounded Llama to make sure that the models, the models is generating the output which is safe for people to use. And we continue to refine it until we hit certain benchmark numbers. We have a responsible use guide link here, and uh, I have mentioned the resources as well. I want to conclude this by saying that there's active research in this space. Every, every week, we see new innovation coming up, new large language model coming up. Llama 2 is extremely powerful. Make sure safety and responsible is important, is the central pillar when you think about building generative AI applications. And I also want to do a call to action that this notebook will be available for you to use it. It will be available on our GitHub recipes. And please use Llama in your projects. This is a great starter code. You'll be able to use this Llama, uh, this code, into your projects and give us feedback. We really value your feedback as we think about building the next generation of the next version of our model. With that, I would conclude my talk. My information is here. Please reach out to me. I also have information of my colleague who actually helped me build this notebook as well, Mohsen Aksen, and uh, his, uh, please reach out to him as well. Thank you.